you're going through trials in your life, you gotta speak resilience in your life. A poem entitled, Remarkably Wonderful by Tasima J. To be blessed by the best is to come out remarkable after someone attempts to murder you. To come out reaching for the hand of God, to locate pain and turn it into God's best for you. To carve out the broken pieces of your pain and decide that someone else needs you more than you need to hold on to the pain to make peace with the redemption of those who hurt you and those awaiting a resolve, an explanation, and a somehow rekindled recollection of an experience revisited. To be remarkably wonderful leaves you with a mindset rooted in a new attitude, a new awareness of what blessed looks like, wrapping your soul around what survivor looks like, clinging to what's left of you, grasping at the edges of a walk through the challenges of retribution and restitution. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is my greatest time of silence. From whom offers all the help I need, all the love I need. I am more than remarkable. I am more than wonderful. I am a blessed survivor. Hey, what's up, my podcast peoples? Woo, woo, woo. It's your girl, Tasima, also known as Speak Resilience in the building. I am so excited, you guys. You guys have no idea how excited you should be. I have the amazing, the remarkable Miss Rhonda Knight, the creator of the 2021 Impact and Influence Conference, an international author, a visionary. Come on, somebody. I got adjectives. I mean, I got adjectives. <laughs> I am so absolutely honored to be a part of this project, to be able to work with someone so remarkable. And you know, that's my love language for you. I, You are remarkable to me. Thank you so much for being here. How are you today? Tasima, first of all, thank you for all of that. And you are remarkable as well. And I am doing great. I'm excited about being on your show and can't wait to to just, I just, I'm just excited to see where we're going. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the number one thing I want to speak about is I don't think you just stumble upon something like an impact and influence authors conference. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that starts in a very real, authentic, deeply rooted place. Can mm -hmm. you share with our viewers what it was like for you watching the journey of inception till now? of this amazing conference that's about to happen in a few short weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's a great question. I love it. So from conception, uh, you know, I, I believe in being led. And 10 years ago, guys, 10 years ago, almost to the day, <laughs> you know, um, I did the first Impact and Influence Authors Conference. And I just know that I felt like the Lord wanted me to bring together people like me, people who wrote books that would impact and influence lives for positive change. And so I just stepped out on faith. I'm like, okay, it's going to be my first author's conference. Let me see what response I get. And to see my, when I put it out there and asked who, want, who wanted to be a part of this as an author, I got so many responses. I mean, literally, I got responses from people way in California in high positions as an author who reached out and they were a part of that very first conference as well. And then uh, several of my NFL, now my good friends that are NFL moms were a part of that conference and a lot of other great authors. And so 
I, I had an interview with uh, Dr. Hill yesterday, and when I was speaking with him, because he's always been a part of each conference as well, one of the things he said was each one of the impact and influence uh, conferences has been so unique and so blessed. And it's so true because at each one, God does something remarkable. And even though it's an author's conference, it's really designed to bless your life, to impart something in your life, to bring about change in your life when you come out to the conference and when you experience it. So I'm really, really excited bringing it up to this day for what God is doing and going to do in this conference. And I wanna tell you folks that's looking at this, you do not wanna miss this con conference. It's going to be amazing. I have amazing people that's a part of it, including this beautiful young lady here. <laughs> and we certainly wanna see you, that's right. <laughs> But, um, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's really going to be a blessing to you. You're going to get so, fed so much from so many beautiful authors. So uh, speaking of beautiful authors, you are mm -hmm. not just the visionary for this amazing conference. And I feel like like there's something that just feels good about saying the 2021 Impact and Influence <laughs> Authors Conference. I just I don't care yes. how long the name is. I just enjoy every time I'm going to mm -hmm. say it. But you are also an author in your own right, internationally. Yes. And I'm really mm -hmm. excited because I have the book you are. And when I tell you you need to go buy this book, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> All right. So the, I, I had a couple of excerpts that really, really stood out for me. But okay. the first thing I wanted to do was just ask you about about the book itself. And if you could kind of share just a little bit about what inspired you to write this book? Because I think there are a lot of people out there who really need to hear what this big, great vision God has given you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this book, as you said, Bless Survivor. Oh, which way do I go? That way. <laughs> that way. <laughs> <This> book, <laughs> Bless Survivor was a book that was uh, birthed out of my surviving attempted murder and rape in 2007. And it was a very horrific thing to go through. I mean, I was stabbed in my left eye. I felt the blade go in my eye, out of my eye. I thought I would lose my eye, but through the grace of God, still got both eyes and it's still now. doing well. <laughs> I need glasses it's looking now. good too, some good eyes too. Looking hey, good. Hey, hey. <laughs> but through that journey, um, I just felt led that I needed to write my story. And I was living in Michigan at the time. And, but I just, Oh, I wanted to get out of Michigan so badly. And so I would come to Georgia and I would visit my oldest daughter who was residing here uh, at that time and my grandsons. And my twin grandsons would always say to me, and they were probably like eight, nine or 10 then, but they would always say, Grandma, are you still writing your book? And I would say, uh, yeah, but I would be really sad to see them. And really, honestly, when I had to write it, I would have moments of sadness and I would put it down and so, but in, um, after three and a half years of just putting it down, <laughs> I just felt led that God was saying, you have to get that book out in this season. So I sat still. And at that time, after three and a half uh, years, I only had part of chapter one. And, but when I knew that the Lord was saying I needed to finish that book, uh, within two and a half months later, I had 19 chapters and I finished the book on New Year's Eve going into 2011 and published on uh, February 27th. And then the Lord showed me what my book would do. So over the 10 years that Blessed Survivor has been out, it has blessed people worldwide. It's blessed people in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, and France, and probably other places I don't even know about. Um, and then by ob being obedient, and I want somebody to hear this because if you feel led that God is leading you in this season to write, then do that very thing because when you're obedient, the doors open, the windows from heaven open. And that's what God did for me. I went across the country and did a, a national tour. So I became a national author right away. Within the first six months, like I said, my book was sold in four countries. So I became international. And uh, he just, like I said, over the last 10 years have shown me how my story has helped other people. So I get emails, I get phone calls, I get text messages of people saying that they were healed or they were delivered or they knew how to deal with their situation. And that blesses my soul because it, it was very hard at first to write, especially chapter two, but it blesses me that this book blessed people. And by the way, um, the UK, 
I got a call from London, England, and they asked me to do my story on surviving evil on the ID channel. And so it was aired even on there. And, you know, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but I have to say this for somebody to hear. Again, it's about moving in that season that God says move, because that's when all the doors open. You know, people write books all the time and you write books and they may not go that far unless you're a celebrity or someone that's already famous. Then you're going to have that kind of recognition. But God is bigger than all things on this earth. So when he's over it, when he's over it, let me tell you, he's going to take that book where he needs it to be. So. Keep that in mind, those out there that's listening. Well, I think what you have to say is super important. Like, it's not just about people seeing you as the visionary. Like, I feel I feel kindred to you in that, you know, working with you and understanding kind of how your mind works similarly to mine <laughs> and how we kind of so much just, so. oh my gosh, like, it, it's amazing how similar we are. But the thing that inspires me the most is you've had to overcome so many things in your life to get to this point. And I mean, I don't even know how to really ask the question and just the, instead of just to come on out and say it. What <laughs> okay. would you say is, the ma is a major challenge you had to rise above in completing this book writing process? Because this was not, like you said, you struggled with chapter two. What was the biggest mm -hmm. challenge? How did it change you? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so, of course, my biggest challenge was chapter two. So when I wrote the book, and even though it's chapter two, I did not write chapter two until after I wrote all the other chapters. So after I wrote all the way up to chapter 19, I went back and wrote chapter two because that is the chapter that I have to tell what happened to me and you know and so i knew that i would have to put myself back in that room where all where this crime happened and i knew that was going to be very emotional for me so the biggest challenge was writing that because as i started to write it and and just trying to take myself back there i felt all the emotions so i literally was shaking i was crying i couldn't finish it and i had to lay it down and just say okay god i have to come back to that and uh, so it took a moment, but I got through it and I wrote chapter two. So I would say that was my biggest challenge um, because I really wanted the reader to, as much as they could, understand what I was feeling at that moment. How did it change you? Um, the book or that chapter? <laughs> how, did that, how did overcoming and completing the book writing process mm -hmm. change you? Well, yeah. one of the ways that it changed me, because during that time, um, like I said, I went through so much. I had PTSD from surviving a horrific crime, and I was overcoming not one thing. You know, surviving attempted mother, mur murder is one thing in itself, but then I was also trying to overcome the fact that I was raped as well. So it was two major things I was trying to overcome, and it was a very heavy thing to carry because... You know, we think that we're, I know, I always thought I was a strong person and I am a strong person, but during that time and that healing process, I didn't feel strong. And I was going through uh, insomnia where I didn't sleep for th those three and a half years, uh, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, um, startle effect, I would jump out of my skin, you know, and just crazy oh, things wow. that was going on. And, uh, and then when I finished the book, I literally went to bed and I woke up in the morning. Now it's important when I say in the morning because for three and a half years, as I mentioned, I had insomnia and I could not sleep because every time I would close my eyes, I would have a flashback of something that happened that day and I would just open my eyes. And um, it wasn't a day I think that went by that I didn't think about that situation or that person. And um, so when I finished, God, it was like a release. It was like a burden lifted off of me. And I slept the whole night. And I was like, oh my God, I woke up in this daylight. Did I just really sleep the whole night? So it was healing in it. So I would say that was the you know best one, the best things that came out of it. And, uh, and of course, the number one best thing is that I saw how God used my story and my testimony, like I said, to bless people worldwide, no matter what their challenge or struggle was that my story, me telling my story could help them. So, okay. So when I think about how you pulled everything together, like mm -hmm. in today's times, obviously you have um, Lady Night Enterprises Publishing, you have 
uh, <laughs> this amazing book that's transforming lives. You have the impact and the impact and influence authors association. I try to get all my acronyms together. <laughs> um, and of course, the impact and influence authors conference. So, mm -hmm. how are you molding these authors? Because all of them are excited. Like every single last one. I need to know what the secret sauce is. Our <laughs> viewers want to know because when the next conference comes, you'll have oh twice God. as many featured authors. <laughs> we're going to have to have a really big, we're going to have to go to exactly. a right <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you well, guys, I happen to know that she had to close some of the opportunities because there were so many people. You yeah. guys, this is such an amazing event. And first of all, you crazy if you're not planning to be at the 2021 Impact and Influence Office Conference. And you will see all information right down there. <laughs> Look down there for the website and all kinds of things. But I'm going to go ahead and let you answer the question because I'm, I'm overly excited. Okay, good. I love your excitement. Okay. It's very touchy. Yes. <laughs> you know, and one of, one of the things I want to point out about that conference, too, is, guys, you can come free. It's a free conference. Free. It's a weekend-long conference they can come free to unless you want to do VIP. Free, free, free. Come free. on, free. <laughs> and well, uh, or, everyone wants to be VIP. How can I you know. be a VIP? Girl, look, let me tell you, this is how you can be a VIP. All you do is pay a simple fee of $50 for the whole weekend. That's not per day. And you got VIP. That gives you VIP gifts. That gives you VIP seating. That gives you all these special things you get to be and do because you're VIP. Now, Tasima, you know me. Everywhere I go, if I'm a part of something, I'm trying to be VIP on that first row. Exactly. And I'm trying to buy everything there. I'm going to buy the bag, the T-shirt, <laughs> whatever is for sale I'm buying. I want that memory. I know one thing. People can spend $50 on dinner. They can spend yes. $50 on a pair of shoes. People right. can spend $50 on a bracelet, a watch. Yes. And, hey, and going you to the theater. <laughs> Come on now. You can spend you get that $50. You could spend fifty dollars to get your VIP membership yeah, for that experience. And speaking of membership, I, I, you I, can become a member. That's right. With the Impact and Influence Authors Association, tell that's them about right. that. That because our viewers need to know how to be connected. Because not yes. everyone can come to Georgia, but uh -huh. everyone around the world can become a member of the IIAA Association. Tell them about it. Yes, uh, woo woo. Uh, All right. <laughs> so the IIAA <laughs> membership, listen, you definitely want to be a member of the Impact and Influence Authors Association because it's made up of people like you, me, Tasima, people with that heart that want to make a difference in this world. You know, there's so many selfish people in this world, but there are also the good, good hearted people like us. And we're people who want to come together to show and make a change. So you can come as a member, you can become a member as an author or writer or you know, poet or whatever, but you also can become a member as a supporter of the art of writing. And, um, and then your, the membership comes with so many things. It gives you discounts with a lot of different um, sponsors that we've had over the years and that, we're, uh, that we have right now as well. It also gives you perks when we do a different events and it gives you um, discounts too when you get ready uh, for those who are aspiring and you're looking for a publishing. I have a publishing company, as Tasima told you, Lady Night awesome. Enterprises Publishing. And so it's going to give you discounts there too. So, so many benefits from it. You see our website, uh, Tasima has uh, listed, and you can go there and learn about becoming a member. And it's going to show you all the great uh, things that's going to come along with that. But you're going to be a part of an organization that really stands on the fact that our job and our goal, and we think it's part of our gift and our talent, is to impact and influence lives for positive change. Because there can be people impact and influence but it may not be positive <laughs> so if you want to be a part of a move that's uh going and growing and doing great things and really honestly i have to bring god into all things i do because let me tell you something about rhonda knight god is the center of everything i do and because he's the center of everything i do then that anointing and that blessing is on there so when you become a part of that you're also under that covering as well 
And uh, everybody may not accept that, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> if you don't accept it, still be a member. <laughs> God bless you anyway. How about yes. that? Hallelujah. And so speaking of, speaking of uh, God blessing a person anyway, mm -hmm. when you make a contribution of any sort to the initiative that's happening with the Impact and Influence Authors Conference, you are also benefiting a mm -hmm. nonprofit organization. Yes. Can you please tell our viewers about Hums and all the great work you're doing with that amazing nonprofit? And, and keeping in mind, viewers, when you make a contribution, when you sponsor any aspect mm -hmm. of this event, you're benefiting this organization. Tell, tell the people about it. Remarkable. Let me tell you guys about this, okay? So Hums is an organization that's dedicated in the fight to help stop violence towards people, especially women and children. And so part of the proceeds go to help in the outreach efforts of Hums and what they do in the community, what they do across the country, you know, when there's a need. Um, and so you're gonna be donating. And like she said, when you're part of the conference, when you're part of what we're doing, you're having the opportunity to make a difference there as well. So you'll be donating to help with those uh, the outreach efforts and the different things that they do. I know that um, they're looking at having healing centers across the country. They're also looking at opening up a home in Michigan for teenage girls coming out of foster care um, so that they can mentor and nurture those girls as well. And so it's a lot of great things they're doing. You can go to the website and you'll learn more about it. It is a website that is designed to help anyone that has uh, been a survivor of a crime or help uh, family members that have had someone that survived the crime and they don't know how to deal with that person's emotions because people, let me tell you, when you go through some things, um, your family around you may not understand your behavior. Like for instance, I had uh, so many people that wanted to hug me, but at that time I didn't want anybody to touch me because I was still emotionally in a healing uh, state. And if you touch me, it, bothered me and it made me tense up but you can't say to someone that's trying to show love don't touch me because <laughs> they're like whoa, whoa i'm just trying to help you i love you my sister you're my brother whatever and so it's, it gives advice as to how to help a, a survivor you know of crimes and also just in general if you need or want to learn more about uh, certain aspects you can go there it's just so uh, it's a very uh, great resource for one and then you'll see all the wonderful things that they do they've done and that they do um, they give toys to over 500 kids at Christmas times in conjunction with toys for tots and uh, they help families who have been through uh, situations that have caused them issues and even families during this pandemic that have gone through financial issues so last uh, Christmas they, we had a toy drive with uh, Shades of Amber and uh, we were able to give toys to uh, families in need. So it's a lot of great things that Hums does. And that website, if you want to go and check it out, is H hyphen or the dash, whichever way you want to call it. So H hyphen U hyphen M hyphen S dot org. So Hums with the dashes in it dot org. Well, I have to say, it's time for us to wrap up. And I really don't want to go. But I tell you one thing for sure. I am absolutely honored and grateful to have you on the show. Remarkable Rhonda Knight. Thank you so much for sharing your vision. Oh, my gosh. It's so wonderful, you guys. Please make it a priority to stop by the 2021 Impact and Influence Authors Conference that's going to be held right in Georgia. You're going to check out the website to find out. If you want to become a sponsor, you can do that. If you want to be a vendor, there may still be room. I don't know. You might need to get on that. A couple of sponsors. You need to jump on that right away. Look, reach out to us yes. soon because like this is how our author spots filled up quickly if i can speak um those vendor spots are going too so i'm telling you do it today or as soon as you hear this you need to do it <laughs> awesome well thank you so much Rhonda Knight. again my name is tasima your girl speak resilience thank you so much to jimbo for the wonderful intro and outro on the podcast and i will look forward to seeing you guys soon keep queening and kinging hey bye you guys Thank you so much, Rhonda. Thank you. Three things. 
Register for the 2021 IIAC at LadyNightEnterprisesPublishing.com. Attend for free all weekend, March 26th through the 28th at the Embassy Suites Gwinnett, 2029 Salalite Boulevard, Duluth, Georgia. You can also find info on how to buy a book from one of our featured authors, become a VIP member, and become a vendor if slots are still available. Check out Firefly Poetry Night with DJ Stax B on the ones and twos, held every second Wednesday at Gillies the Spot, 4343 Dunwoody Parkway in Dunwoody, Georgia. Our featured poet of April is Q. Come and check her out. Stax B Entertainment provides entertainment on Friday night and Sunday, so check out StaxB.com. Don't forget to follow a like, a tweet, a subscribe, and support us, sister. For more info on this and all events, check out speakresilience.com.